Would you like to watch me tape a segmented 300 meter line? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highlight. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my mess. We are trying to tape six pairs of 50 meter sections together to make a total of 300 meters of webbing. And I wanna show you how I'm doing that because it's kind of complicated even though I love my segmented high lines. So all of my webbing is in 50 meter sections with sewing loops on both ends. Whenever you buy webbing, even if you don't plan on doing big stuff, get sewing loops on both ends. It makes your stuff, uh, you could build off of it. And I always like having sewing loops on the static side of any high line that I'm doing. Now the problem is if your main line is the same length as your backup line, this is spider silk, it's lightweight, low stretch. I like it for my backups. It's kind of sharp for a main. I like Feather Pro for my main, but I also have a uh, rainbow. I believe this is rainbow from Rad Slacklines. So I'm gonna kind of mix some webbings in here just to see what that feels like. But um, in order to have your backup and your main the same length, you have to have extenders. Now I'm not super sold on six millimeter AM steel for extenders. We have lots of videos about this. I'm not gonna go into detail how to make these right now. I am going to experiment with buying webbing extenders and just putting loops to loop, loop to loop to extend my backups with soft shackles. Now that we have soft thimble technology from a key slack lines. So this is a uh, MK4 or mantra or flight or thick webbing, whatever the hell you want to call it. When you squeeze it, it's pretty stiff. It's stiffer than most of the other webbings I have. So I have this scrap and what I do is I take about that much of it and I tape the end of it and then I burn it of course so it doesn't get all frayed up. So then you just stick it inside and you make sure it's straight and you tape that. Why would I do that you ask? Because that just took a 29 kilonewton loop with a five millimeter soft shackle the way I connect my Enov splits and makes it more strong stronger than this loop is actually rated for. So this will actually break now or the soft shackle will break before it tears my loop apart. We actually have a lot of brake tests about that and whether or not that's even safe to do. I do believe that's safe now. Yes, you have to tape this in place. It's not gonna stay without tape, but tape is magical. So on this end, I have the very beginning, which is going to be after I make all my piles, gonna get flaked into a bag and that'll be the top of my bag. Now you wanna grab the roughest, sharpest rocks you can to hold your segments in place so your webbing doesn't last very long. But what I did was I flaked this really, really nice and then I did this to keep this separated from the next pile. I'm just gonna to continue to make piles on this tarp and so I can flake it into a big haul bag at the end and I know that everything's correct. Now what I have here, is rocks damaging my webbing. I write top main and top main on my webbing because this can get very confusing, especially when um, you have different webbings in the system. Uh, that's the Enov split. We have lots of videos about that. I'll show you this um, one time in this video. I have to redo this because I don't have the soft thimbles in here. So, uh, but basically I just keep it all separated you don't want things twisted. You don't want things getting turned inside out. You don't want uh, something to go inside of this loop. It becomes a nightmare. You really want this to be perfect. So let me do one segment and then maybe either we'll time lapse it or just show you the very end of the end result. This is my second segment. I'm going to set down. And this is top main. So I know red is top. Now the backup is longer than the main. This has already been taped. I just have to make sure it's perfect. So now I have a twist in the backup. I'm not too worried about that because it might be corrected on the other side. If I have more than one twist, I'll try to fix it. But I like where the backup slides and the main 
the tape stays on the main. So this is normal slider tapes. It's not reverse slider tapes. I like that for segmented high lines. Everyone's got an opinion on that. If you have an opinion on that, put that in the comments below. So you keep it flat. And I'm not flaking this in the bag right now. I'm just inspecting my webbing, inspecting my tapes, and making sure everything is perfect. See that loop? Because the backup's longer than the main. So I stretch it out. I do have a light twist in there. I don't care. You just want to make sure your main is flat and that you don't have, when you're all done, your backup over your main in a way that you can't fix it because you taped it wrong. Because when the backup's sliding back and forth over that, it can damage things, especially if it got windy. If I do want to fix one of these twists that are really quite annoying, I would just figure out which way I want to twist it, pinch it, squeeze it under the tape, test it, go one more time, pinch it, turn it, and now it's all fixed. So the length I do is between three to five arm lengths. So one, two, three. And that's where my next tape is. And I'll go three, three, five, or three, five, three, five arm lengths. You never really want to have everything consistent. The irregularities of the loops helps absorb some of the wiggles. Check to make sure your tapes are sliding. This is fiber tape. I can't break this. So what I do is I just fold over the end just a little so I can easily pull it off. You can see that's what that flap is. It's not poorly taped that's smartly taped. So if I ever have to undo it, I can. Might look janky, but it's well thought out. Hey, it's not twisted. Did you know you can repair your webbing by just sewing about 10 bar tacks with 138 thread overlapping each other and it's full strength? If you have a damaged section of your webbing, you don't have to cry. You just have to ship it to a slackline company to sew that for you. When you find out what shipping costs, then you can cry. Now this is a different part of the taping process is where I girth hitched my extender to my backup. And in order to keep it in place, that's what that tape is for. It can wiggle and jiggle and not go anywhere. But I don't want that hanging there and try to pass over that with the ring. So what I do is the reverse slider tapes that I just shit on. So about right there, I will tape the sticky side on the backup. You go about one inch over, come back around. We have videos on this, on how to tape slack lines. It's a lot easier if you do this at home and not when all of your friends are waiting for you to go high line a 300 meter line. Okay, now that the sticky side's on the backup, you go over the main, And why do I do that, you ask? Why do you use electric tape? Well, because if I have to fix something out there, I can. Uh, I do it on both sides, so I do it here as well. This side's a little tricky because it's round and this is flat, so you actually go a little bit, uh, you can see that. You wanna fold that in right there, then come back over. It's a lot easier on the couch. but you definitely want to have about an inch. Make sure you're flat and you're not screwing things up. You don't want any sticky part on the part that's supposed to slide, hence slider tapes. So now you can pull it back and forth, but this stays in place and can slide. Now I want one tape on the extender holding up that loop. And because that's not going to see much force, I like to use electric tape. Now I don't want these so close to each other, so I'm going to move this now instead of dealing with it later. Okay, so I slid this down and I have just a little loop there and my loop here. The reason I tied that knot is so I knew that I could keep these together and what side was up. Now I'm gonna do the a nope split to the next section and start taping it. So here I flaked out uh, the rainbow and spider and I'm gonna add my extender on. In order to girth hitch it, I put the padded side on a padded loop in order to get more strength. You go over that way, then you go in. And that's the strongest way to girth hitch. And then you wanna make sure the padding is touching the padding. 
and then you tape that with, I use climbing tape because it's really sticky and it won't come off. And that has proven to be super strong enough in our brake tests. Okay. Okay, let's put the soft shackles and connect the two pairs of webbings together now. Mmm, <sighs> smells good. Got my two soft thimbles, which is dumb because I need three. And ideally, you wouldn't spend your vacation time doing this, you would do this at home. Now I got my soft thimbles for one, two, and three loops. So I'm gonna insert those before I connect anything. Now I'm gonna tape the shit out of this when I'm done, so I don't need a lot to hold in the soft thimble for now. That's bomber. So I spent like a year with James Hogarth sewing stuff, trying to figure out how to get like maximum strength out of a loop and soft shackles because I like soft shackles on them. It's lightweight. I don't like having metal in a system. So if I whip near this, it doesn't come and whack me. But that, such a simple solution. Stefan from McKee Slacklines, so smart. This is gonna be the top main. So red will be up just because that's what we decided. In order to do the Enov split, you gotta make this into an infinity sign or a figure eight shape. So you go up inside one, you go inside of itself like that. And then you don't wanna screw this part up. So let's make sure it's right first. And this is a five millimeter soft shackle because that's super good enough. Red up, red up. And the reason we want that infinity shape is because we stick this soft shackle down both loops of that and connect our backups to it. In this case, that one and this one. And that makes it cross redundant. So if one side were to fail, it's still holding on. We have a lot of videos about this because last year I was very excited about it. But since I was doing this process, I wanted to make a fresh video, mostly to bump the soft thimbles. So I'm gonna tape all these closed. You cannot tape SK78. It's the slippery Dyneema that rad sells. It's the stronger stuff, but it's more oily. This is SK75 from gotomarine.com. I do not get a kickback if you buy from them. They just are the cheapest place on the internet, at least for America. So. I'm going to tape this. Tape sticks very, 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 very well to that. So I'm gonna pull that out and I just tape the throat of it so it does not come undone accidentally. Now, if you've ever tried to undo a soft shackle with even just the slightest amount of tension, you know it's very difficult to undo them. So I don't mind having the extra tape to feel better when I'm walking across thousand foot long high line. So those are taped shut. Now I'm going to tape them together so everything stays nice and neat. I'm going to offset these. These loops seem to be pretty big with all of this soft thimbling going on. Now we may want a rope swing on this later. So what I do before I tape this even more is I go in the, this thing while it's not tensioned. Because when that loop is tensioned, it's going to be pretty hard to fit anything in there. I'm going to close that and I'm going to tape it back like this or I can, so I'm not stepping on it, put it underneath, but that's going to be used as my ring stabilizer later, which is in another video and a whole rope swinging thing later, but I like to add that in while I can. So those soft shackles are installed. I'm going to tape those out of the way. Lots of tape. Hey, look, main and main. Now, I, since I don't have a Sharpie, I'm going to mark top main by just putting a green random piece of tape right there. And I know that means top. So I know that means red is up. So that's pretty much done. So now before I start my next section, I'm going to use more rocks and put that right there and then make my next pile and just keep going. Wanna see a time lapse of it? So much for a time lapse. It's hot. <laughs> Anyways, so we are uh, putting this stuff in the bag and I realized that this line here, 
was flipped over the main because we had to fix the next section and it looked like that. And that would not have been fixable once it's rigged. It's really nice to have everything flaked out on this tarp and then flake it back into a bag very carefully and methodically. Um, it was easy enough to just uh, untape and retape. And that's the moral of the story here is take your time, do it right, because there's really no fixing it without just completely derigging later. Make sure you're packing your bags tightly as you go. <laughs> no, but seriously, like you definitely want to uh, push this stuff down pretty hard because I still have all that to go in here and this big haul bag is half, it was more than half full before I started pushing it down. So grab a friend, get in your bags and stomp. We're not gonna show you how to rig this whole thing, but I'll show you what we've got set up here. It's all well thought out, I think. So this is the, let's see here, right there is the 275 meter anchor here at Elephant Rock. And this is the other side of the tension side. And that is the 50 meter over there. So welcome to Elephant Rock. What we have here is the very end of the bottom of the bag clipped here in case people need to let go in order to save their lives. It'll go zoom and might damage the webbing, but nobody dies. Goes to the bag. And that is flaked to the bottom of the bag. Coming out of the top here is gonna go to, we have a couple people here. One person will be the brake system. And it's gonna go to that here, Bobby. Bobby's our brake and our A-frame right now. Going to this BAC, big ass carabiner. And it's nice to have that friction and Z-drag. And in order to have the proper amount of Z-drag, we have the carabiner here as well. And Bobby is our A-frame holding up this point to a bush in the past. So if this gets pulled hard, it doesn't pull on Bobby. And if there's any clusters here, he would be able to fix this. And then this would be sent out over to me. I'll be on that side. And on this end, we have a swivel. Um, and I'll put a leash on this before we go. So it keeps the top top and uh, the swivel will get rid of all the, the twists. So ideally this whole thing should be flat when it comes over and we'll have somebody clipped into some climbing bolts here, standing near the edge, making sure it's going out flat and not abrading against the rock. So that's it for basically how to tape and prepare a big piece of webbing. Of course, if you're doing a smaller high line, you could always just eliminate some of the Z-drags or eliminate some of the complexity. Uh, six pieces of 50 meter pairs or 300 meters all fit in one big haul bag. Uh, you could technically fit in more, but then it would be about 100 pounds or like 46 kilos. And that's really hard to carry. So think about um, storage and lifting and all that. But anyways, if you like this video, um, make sure you click like. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. It helps guide what we do in the next videos. And if you have a way to do this better or uh, something I haven't thought of yet, uh, this is all experimental. We love to learn. Please leave that in the comments below. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube because we're posting on all those platforms all the time. Cheers.